So I moved in here 2001. And at the time, this was the only shop available that I could do body work in. They don't really care what goes on in here. The city doesn't really care what goes on in here either, which is kind of handy. But the downside is there's no sewer, there's no running water, there's no gas. We have electricity, but it's only 100 amp service. Biggest problem I've had is getting people to bring their car in here to get work done. I've spent thousands on advertising over the years and zero response. Part of the problem is this place is a dump. The problem I've got is the entrance is way, 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 way down there. So by the time you get down to my shop, you've got a full dose of this place. Normally, they don't make it past that tree. They just turn around and leave. I've heard a bunch of people say there is no way I'm leaving my car in here. That is the cleaned up version. You should have seen this place 20 years ago. People were afraid to come in here. So I have the two worst shops out here, by far. The other ones are a, they're a lot better than these. These ones are just, they're just shacks built on the ground. They didn't even level off the ground before they built. Like I said, they just built it on the ground. And now it is rotting into the ground. The concrete is... I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's an inch and a half thick. It's probably an inch or less. But at least the rent is cheap. Well, it used to be cheap. It's all about location, location, location. They're definitely right about that. Yeah, this place never had a chance. It just never took off. Made enough to survive. That was that's about it. I was doing all right till about five years ago. Then business just went off a cliff. The cost of living in Kelowna is so high that my my clientele just can't keep up. Average home price is like 1.2 million. Rent on a one bedroom apartment is like two grand a month if you can find one. Yeah. My clients just can't afford it anymore. Clonus changed. It's not like it was. I noticed around 2010 is when things started to change. That's when the big money moved into town and real estate just took right off. That was about the time people started to change. Yeah. The good clients are few and far between now. The bad ones, they just keep getting worse and worse and worse. I've talked to other business owners and they all say the same thing. And they all have a story to go along with it. There's restoration shops up and down this valley. Rust Valley Restorers is hour and a half, two hours, up that way. Yeah, there's a lot of money around here, but they want nothing to do with this place. And at this point, fine, whatever. I don't care anymore. I'm done with it. So right now I'm behind on all my bills. Like, way behind on my bills. So, I'm just going to focus on getting caught back up, getting out of debt, and the biggest thing is get everybody else's dead projects out of here. I'm going to be doing my own thing, and I need my shop back. So this belongs to a buddy of mine. He does tree service. He's really good at it. But 
he got tired of trying to do business in Kelowna and dealing with Kelowna people. Sound familiar? So he packed up and moved to Vancouver Island. So I've been storing a few of his vehicles till he gets settled. So this is going to be the first one out. It's going to be coming up pretty quick. It's uh, 74, I think. Three quarter ton, four wheel drive. It's in really good shape. We're just going to do a quick paint job on it. I've got, there's no major rust on it. Just a lot of, a lot of little stuff. I gotta clean up the hood. We got a bumper for it. We're not doing any lift kits or anything crazy. He just wants this thing stock. Stock, reliable. DOT will leave it alone. That's the plan for this one. So here's the toy. This one's getting fixed up for the bush. Like we're not doing we're not doing a restoration on this one. Fix up all the rust. It's got a little bit starting there. Rockers are starting to go. A few spots on the floor. The tailgate, we gotta rework this a little bit. I got a rack that's gonna be going on there. He wants to be able to haul a canoe with it. The tires are still good. The rear end's not. It's blowed up. I'll be swapping that out. Interior's still good. It's a mess. The headliner's falling down, but yeah. Nothing new there, but yeah, this is a nice one. So what we're doing up here, as you can see, a little damage. Frame's bent. They took it out in the test drive and uh, drove it into a ditch. The, this frame rail's pushed up. That's why the fender's all crinkled and buckled. The rad support he wants to change. He wants the ones with the, the stacked rectangle lights. So we'll be doing that. Just do a quick a quick paint job on it. I might go raptor on this thing. Who knows? Like it's it's headed for the bush, so it's not gonna be fancy. But yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. I'm looking forward to this. Once I get done working on everybody else's crap, I want to start working on this thing. You know, fix it up, sell it. All I'm going to do with it, get it running and driving. The, uh, the motor's good, or it was, 15 years ago. Transmission's blown up. But go through all that, go through the brakes and the steering, and get it good to go. And body-wise, I'm just going to clean up the rust, probably do flat black or red oxide or who knows. Just kind of go rad rod with it. I just want to get to where it's a good driving car and hand it off to the next guy. Let them do whatever they want to do with it. But yeah, that one's going to be coming up. Kind of looking forward to this one. It'd be nice being able to work on my own stuff. So speaking of working on my own projects, here's the corner where my all my personal projects ended up. As you can see, they've been here for a while. That's a 72 Impala sitting on a car trailer. You can barely see it. Yeah. It's been a while. So there's the Impala. It's going to be a logging show. So that's my boat. It's an 18 foot Rhinel. There it is. Part of it. I think Mother Nature has reclaimed this one. I think I might let her have it. So I built this car back in the 90s. 
This was fun. It's a one car car show back in the day. I want to get this thing back on the road. Probably over the winter. Start working on it. Piece it all back together. But, uh, it's going to be quite the operation to get that thing out of here. It's been here for a while. So I'm not too sure where I go from here. I've been slowly fixing up the shops, getting them reorganized, you know, maximize workspace. Made a couple of videos, mostly for my own record. I'll post them. You guys can watch or not. I don't care. I don't know where I'm going from here. I'm not going to depend on other people, that's for sure. i got to get self-sufficient. Especially the way the economy is going. It's not looking good. I try talking to people around here about it, and they think I'm crazy. Oh, real estate's fine. It's never going to go down. Well, I hope it doesn't. I'm just going to get ready in case it does. Exactly what that means? I'm not sure yet, but there, I'll figure it out as I go. I know one thing for sure, there's going to be room in the shop for this thing. I want to start working on my own stuff again. That was the whole point of getting the shop. Being able to build my own projects. Over the years of trying to just keep this place going, I... Kind of lost sight of that. 